How are technological innovations changing the finance landscape? Britt Littner and Henning Holzer from Tungsten join me now to explain. Well, Britt, if I might start with you, how is technology changing the finance industry as we know it? Technology is changing the way we distribute and deliver. We can reach our audience in a much more efficient way, very quickly, very flexibly. With regard to delivery, we're able to reach a much wider audience, which you can't do in the way we did before, one-on-one -on -one meetings, paper due diligence. And I think the important thing is to, to consider it also from the customer's perspective, their ability to engage with you changes. Mm. Uh, and you can do a lot more on research and access to, to data information and, and products in a much richer vein because you have it all online and, and a lot of people prefer to do it online as opposed to showing up at the, with a hat in hand and, and ask for the brand, bank branch manager for, for a loan. I mean, that's, that day is gone. Yeah, and there has been talk that fintech will actually replace the traditional trader. What do you make of this? Probably as a blanket statement, probably exaggerated, but I think there are some traditional lenders who will not make it, who will not get it. Um, they are struggling or hampered to some extent by legacy or heritage IT systems. Uh, as well as cultural uh, obstacles to engaging with the clients. As an industry, I think what we're seeing is a probably a fragmentation with new uh, fintech companies being established and carving out a position for themselves specifically in the retail and the SME uh, sector. That most likely lead to a <clears throat> consolidation in the industry and uh, I'm not sure that the banks will be the driver of that consolidation. And what would you say will be the sort of knock-on effect for small and medium-sized enterprises? Well, there are more and more alternatives for funding, from crowdsourcing to peer-to-peer -peer lending to online early payment, which is what we do. Um, these sectors have been growing by multiples of, what, 100% to date? Sure. I mean, the, the numbers are, are extraordinary. And from my own experience as a small business owner in the retail sector, obtaining access to working capital was always a huge challenge. And uh, when I was doing that years ago, the banks weren't as keen to lend anymore. And where we are now wasn't as hot. It was just, it was, it was, it was the fintech companies, et cetera, online non-bank lenders were uh, nascent. We were in an embryonic state, so I didn't have access to that capital. So when we were dealing with big London stores, having that cash burn issue, trying to find cash flow for three months to six months was a real stress. Now that these new, new sources of funding have become available from the non-bank lenders, it's really helped with cash flow problems for SMEs. And would you say traditional bank lending is on the decline? And what's the knock-on effect? It's shifting and those that adapt will win. The knock-on effect is that the non-bank lenders are the beneficiary of this. And as demonstrated by the Bank of England figures at the end of June, the first quarter of this year showed a small increase. The second quarter dipped and in the last 12 months to date, it dropped by 70 basis points. So I think that that data reflects the knock-on effect. And Henning, how do you think this will impact companies and how can they even prepare for it? Very positive for companies, specifically smaller companies, which will have many more options as a result of this development. The trick is for them to understand, to explore these options and look beyond their banking relationships because there are a range of different products being available to them, which has not been cost-effective before. So that matching the right product with your right require funding requirement is very important and it's much easier now if you know where to look. Cash flow is, is critical for any small business to grow their business, as we know. So if you can use uh, an invoice financing solution that you, you flip uh, and the receivables to cash, is an incredibly efficient way to actually manage your cash flow as opposed to lending for uh, building your second factory, which, is, which would have a different product. Uh, so understanding what's available to you is important and, and not be tied to what the bank is offering you. Well, why do you think banks, traditional banks, aren't adapting in this way? You said they're not sort of taking up this technology. A lot of them have IT systems that are not fit for purpose anymore. Um, they're, you know, they're built in a different world for a different purpose and changing that is expensive and cumbersome. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a cultural shift that needs to be required. But you have to think about it. it entrepreneurs coming through the ranks now are digital natives. They are used to consuming mm -hmm. data very differently. And they are used to engaging with their business partners differently. They want it online. They want to be able to make their own decisions without having to meet somebody or call somebody. And that shift is very fundamental, I think, for a lot of lenders who don't kind of get that, embrace that. And, and fintech companies are built on that premise. And looking worldwide, where would you say fintech is sort of leading the way? It's a generational thing. And it's just probably more stronger in some countries. And others. UK is a very, very advanced, and as well as the Nordic, Northern European countries. 
advance in their use and adoption of, of technology for transacting and interacting with, with companies from, you know, where they buy stuff and services they buy. But it's also interesting, you see pockets, for like Turkey, for example, it's incredibly sophisticated when it comes to fintech. Online banking in Turkey is, is very, very high. So there are some, probably some analogies with, with mobile telephony in Africa, which actually bypassed the whole fixed line technology because it just was a better technology. And I think you'll see some of the same things with, with fintech. It's actually a very more efficient way to bring less developed countries into uh, a more efficient environment when, when it comes to banking. And I think that's an interesting opportunity if you are open to that. Mm -hmm.